This is a tutorial for approximation and error. Most of this should be review, um, but I want to uh, just make sure we are feeling confident about it and then introduce something slightly new. Um, but let's start with rounding. Um, you know that with IB, uh, DP exams, you're generally asked to round to three significant figures unless otherwise noted, round everything to three significant figures. Um, so in this case, I've got some examples, um, three significant figures. If we look at example A, um, for 83,064 would be the f starting with the most valuable digit of eight and then two more. So those are three significant figures. Um, we need to take that last digit and decide, do we keep it a zero or round it up to one? And we, to do that, we look at the six next to it. Since the six is five or above, we round that that tells us to round the zero up to one. So this is approximately, and we use like curly equal, and a curly equal sign to show approximately, um, 83,100. So uh, again, we rounded that zero up to a one, and then everything else uh, beyond that we replaced with zeros. Um, let's take a look at example B. Three significant figures we start with the most valuable digit and then take the next take three um, so we're looking at this zero and deciding do we keep it where it is or in increase it by one the four t since it's below five tells us to keep it um, to keep it where it is so we approximate 10,044 to just be 10,000 example C 31.695. For three significant figures, we start with the most valuable digit, so the three. Um, and those are our digits that we're going to keep. Everything else gets rounded up. The question is, do we keep the six? The nine, the nine tells us to round the six up to seven. And then everything beyond that can drop off altogether. Um, so we have approximately 31.7. For part D, our most valuable digit is the four, three significant figures. We decide if we keep the nine or round it up. Um, the two says keep it where it is. And so this is approximately 4.29. I want to pause right here and have you notice that um, We've in all of these cases we have three significant figures. Um, here we can see there are three significant figures, which leaves us with two decimal places. Here we can see three significant figures, which leave us with just one decimal place because we have two, um, because we have a digit in the tens place and the ones place. Um, we can kind of see for part A that we have three significant figures. We rounded the zeros off. Um, in part B, we, it's hard to tell. You wouldn't necessarily know by looking at this that we have three significant figures, but um, we know that we have. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, go back to, there we go. Um, for E, we are going to take our three significant figures. Um, we, that seven stays a seven because the one follows it. So we have 0 0.0367. That's three significant figures, even though it's four decimal places. So notice the number of decimal places does not, um, is, is not connected to the number of significant figures. Um, and finally, in this last one, 19.989. Um, the eight tells us to round the nine up, which turns it into 10. Um, that would turn that whole 19, that, since that becomes 10, that become the nine, the other nine becomes 10, which makes the whole thing 20.0. And here we write even the point zero because it shows that we have rounded to three significant figures to keep all your figures. Okay, so hopefully that's just a little refresher. Um, approximating... Approximating is really useful in just real life when you're having to deal with math um, in real life. 
So when performing a calculation, we can approximate by rounding numbers to one significant figure and then perform the calculation. So if we were rounding, if we were approximating 872 times 52, as an example A, um, we could just round that 872 to just round it to 900, and the 52, round it to 50. So again, both of those, we just picked the most valuable digit and rounded. Um, so now, now we've got 90, 900 times 50. Well, 9 times 5 is 45, and three zeros, there's one, two, three zeros, so we have three zeros there. So this is approximately 45,000. For part B, we can round that 61,812 to just 60,000. Round the 384 to just 400. And now we're doing 60,000 divided by 400. Um, quick note, we can cancel off any duplicate zeros. So it's actually just 600 divided by 4. Um, and if you think of 60 divided by 4 is 15, so 600 divided by 4 is 150. So this is approximately 150. And then part C, again, round both of these to one significant figure. So 4.37 is approximately 4. Z 0 0.0482 is approximately 0 0.05. And 4 times 0.5, or 4 times a half, is just 2. So that's something that, although I was writing it down to illustrate it, those are things that often you can do in your head, and that can be really handy when you're any, doing anything from sort of trying to, trying to estimate measurements to estimate cost, um, all kinds of things in real life. So the new part of this lesson, which it might be new to you, is about errors in measurement. Um, nothing can be measured exactly because our tools of measurement are not precise enough to do so. So we can only be as precise in our measurements as our tools are. Um, and really, we can only be, um, we have to assume that we're just rounding, the tools, the tools are just estimating. So in other words, our measurements are as only as accurate as plus or minus half of the smallest division on the scale. Anything in between a half smaller or a half larger would round to that value. And so that's as precise as our scales can be. Um, so I have some examples that we're gonna look at to see what I mean by this. Uh, we're asked to determine the range of possible values for each of the following. So for part A, we've got this pencil um, with a ruler S in centimeters. And so we're trying to estimate the length of this pencil. Um, you can see it's larger than five centimeters, um, even larger than five and a half. This scale, there are, centimeters are always broken down into tenths. So it looks like it's about, I don't know, what do you think? 0.6, something like that. Um, so we could estimate this ruler or this pencil to be about 5.6 centimeters. But as you can see, we're not exactly at 5.6. We can't see exactly. Um, so we really just have to, if, if we estimate 5.6, then that could actually mean anywhere between 5.55 um, less than the pencil length um, or all the way up to 5. Um, 0.65. Any number in between that range would round to 5.6. For example, if you had, if the actual, if we were able to get a true measure and the pencil were 5.59, that rounds to 5.6. If it were actually 5.63, that would also round to 5.6 centimeters. So this range of values gives us all the values that would round to 5.6. Um, so let's look at the diagonal of a phone. Many phones um, have diagonal length 6.1 inches. And so that could actually mean that the range of possible values for that would be 
than 6.05 inches, less than the diagonal, less than 6.15 inches. Again, anything in that range of values would round to 6.1 inches. So we take um, a half of the smallest division, um, 0 0.05 in this case, and add it and subtract it to our number to get our minimum possible value. Our minimum value of the phone diagonal would be 6.05 inches and our maximum would be 6.15. Um, let's try this example of the perimeter of a piece of wood that's 78 centimeters by 24 centimeters. Um, so let's think about what are our minimum possible values for each of those. Uh, the lowest value, so let me just, well, I mean, I could write this as 78. The length could be 78 plus or minus a half of an inch, which means it could be anywhere from 77.5 centimeters to 78. 0.5 centimeters. I'm just going to write in min and max. And the same is true for the width of the wood. So it could be 24 plus or minus a half. In other words, it could be 23.5 centimeters or 24.5 centimeters. Again, min and max. So if we want the perimeter the range of possible perimeters, then we would um, look, try to find the lowest possible perimeter, which to do that, we would use these values for our length and width. Um, so we, for the minimum perimeter, we'd have 70, oops. Um, I'll just use a different color here. 77.5 times two, because that's, it's a rectangular piece of wood um, and we're looking for perimeters and then plus 23.5 times two, that's gonna be our lowest possible, um, smallest possible length of wood, which turns out to be 202, 202 centimeters. That's the minimum perimeter. And then the maximum, we just use the maximum values And so we get um, seven, yeah, keep doing that. 78.5 times two plus 24.5 times two. Again, that's just the perimeter, twice the length plus twice the lit width. And that comes up to 206. So we could write this that the perimeter must be between 202 centimeters and 206 centimeters or written algebraically, 202 oops. cm is less than the perimeter, is less than 206 centimeters. And our last example is um, actually the, the same piece of wood, but we're looking for the area this time. Um, and so to do this, we just do the same thing, but we... Um, we use our minimum length and width and our maximum length and width to find the possible areas. So our minimum area, our minimum area is going to come from 77.5 times 23.5. And that is 1821.25. Centimeters squared. And our minimum, our maximum area is 78.5 times 24.5. Type that in 78.5 times 24.5. And that's 1923.25 centimeters squared. So we could end with a inequality like this. Um, so when you're doing any calculations, you need to add plus or minus half of the smallest increment, and then you need to 
use any your minimum and maximum values to do any further calculations to create a smallest and a largest of whatever it is you're trying to measure.